Good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. It is wonderful to see all of you here in the sanctuary. Welcome to those that are joining us on our Facebook Live and welcome to those that are joining us through YouTube. We are glad that you are here to worship with us on this special day. Today we will also um, participate in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so for those that are worshiping with us online, I invite you to have a, a bread or a, a cracker um, and a beverage with you to participate with us. Um, those that are in the sanctuary will invite you at that time to come forward. And if you want us to come to you, just let us know. We also have some prepackaged communion elements if anyone would prefer those. Um, so just let us know at that time and we can have that for you. Um, the order of worship is a little bit different today um, and the screens are not working. So if you need a copy of the bulletin, if you'd raise your hand and we'll get one to you. Um, otherwise, we invite you just to, to participate uh, along the way. Um, today we're going to continue focusing on uh, questions that we ask God. And today the question is, why is Jesus special? And so as you listen to the songs today, as you sing along, as you listen to the scripture, as you read the liturgy, as you listen to the message, I want you to be mindful of, of why is Jesus special? What is so special about him for those who uh, knew him 2,000 years ago? And what is special about him today? And and I want to invite you now to, to stand as you're able in body and or spirit to hear Kyle's reading from Mark of the first Palm Sunday. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I want to invite you to open your hymnals um, to hymn 278, Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
want to invite you to join Raymond in the call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death, cradling hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wave palm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to cushion his walk. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. Let us pray with our opening prayer. Steadfast love, you hand us the palm branches so that we wave them in hope. You steady us in the days when the pain is stuck to the bottom of our lives. When fear is our constant companion, we empty ourselves so that you might fill us with joy the humble healer. When our mouths turn numb and we cannot speak our dreams, you tenderly caress our cheeks, leaning over to hear our faltering words. When our arms have grown weak from the burdens we carry, you take them from us and strengthen us with your mercy. We empty ourselves so that you might fill us with grace, the voice of wisdom. When death hovers so close we can feel its cold breath, you come to us, the warm breath of resurrection, pushing aside our fears. When we hesitate to walk into the unknown stretching before us, you tightly clasp our hands and teach us the first step. We empty ourselves so that you might fill us with peace. God in community, holy and one, we open our hearts to you. Amen. So let us now sing all glory, laud, and honor. Yes, verses one. draw your attention to all of the prayers that were listed with your bulletin and invite you throughout the week to be in prayer for all the persons and situations there for the things for which we are looking for asking for God's intervention as well as those things for which we celebrate um boy <laughs> that would not be something we celebrate <laughs> 
<laughs> Lord, help us with our technology. <laughs> We're struggling a little bit with that today. Um, as we come to our time of prayer, I, I want to lift up all of those that are mourning this day for having witnessed, experienced another school shooting this week. Just be, my, I want to lift up all of our children and our, and our families and all those that are impacted by violence around the world. Um, are there joys or concerns that you want to lift up today? Tracy. Let's try it. <laughs> okay. Um, Hang on a minute. There's something really not right. <laughs> Give me a second. Check. Um, we've been praying for my friend, Val Bentley. Um, they had told her, they found a mass in her lung, and they had told her that she had lung cancer. They were pretty sure. Well, when they did the biopsy, they came, and they found out she has histoplasmosis, which is a um, fungal infection from bat droppings or pigeons, and they have no idea how she got it. So she has to go see a infectious disease doctor. So, but if that's left untreated, that can be fatal. But that's, I think that's a better. So praise the Lord for that one. Are there other joys or concerns? Don't let the microphone scare you away. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the game in. I don't know what's going on. I don't need it. I've had five kids. Um, I would like the church to remember my cousin, Nancy Woods. She uh, underwent surgery, uh, donated um, liver. Uh, she had liver transplant, but she was told she has sepsis now, and she's not doing well. Um, Nancy uh, is a, a believer and she's holding fast to God's promise. So if you could keep Nancy Woods and also her niece, Beth Lowry, who gave her, or it's West, Beth Les West, who gave her, uh, she was the donor, the donor. Are there other joys or concerns? Shot. John and I have had some eventful, uh, an eventful week of just future job decisions and just excitement that we have options, but also uh, just pray that we make the best decisions going forward. Yeah. Are there other joys or concerns? Let's pray. God of us all, and not just some. We come with joy in celebration of this Palm Sunday. We come to shout, Hosanna, save us. Save us, Lord. Save us with your love. Save us with your forgiveness. Save us with your peace. Save us with your hope, O oh Lord. Lord, we remember. We remember your triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And the crowds recognizing you for the king that you are, O oh Lord. May we too recognize you this day and every day. Oh, Lord. Lord, you are the great physician, the greatest healer ever. And Lord, we lift up to you all that are on our prayer list, those names that have been spoken and those that are unspoken that we hold dear in our hearts. Lord, put your healing touch in these situations. Keep your hand there until they are healed, Lord, we pray. Lord, be with our communities. 
help us to find different ways of resolving conflicts other than violence, O oh Lord. Lord, we know that you are the Prince of Peace. You showed us a different way. You continue to show us new ways to be in relationship with one another in ways that foster peace and justice, Lord. May we follow you. May we shout Hosanna. May we go where you are leading us, O oh Lord. Lord, save us. Save our children. Keep them safe, O oh Lord. Lord, save us from painful decisions that we make sometimes. Help us to make decisions that align our lives, our hearts, our minds with you, O oh Lord. For you are our rock, our redeemer, our savior, our salvation. And for that, Lord, we give great thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now let's sing Jesus Loves Me. It's wonderful to see all of you here and welcome to the children and youth that are joining us online as well I brought some things for us today I brought a story do you all like stories yeah and I brought my bag do you remember what the bag is a lent in a bag that we've been looking at every week we've been picking something out of the bag but I had a surprise this morning. I looked in my bag and what I was looking for I know had been there, but it wasn't there. Maybe it flew away. Because today, what's in our bag is a butterfly. And you all have pictures to color of a butterfly. But what else is on the picture? Can you see? A caterpillar, a little worm, right? Do you like caterpillars? Yeah. Do you know what else is on the picture? There's flowers. What else do you see? Do you know what this thing's called here? This is a little cocoon. A cocoon. And the caterpillar has to eat a lot. Do you like to eat? Yeah? Yummy? Good food? Um, the caterpillar has to eat a lot. And then the caterpillar goes into a cocoon. And, in, and once it goes through the cocoon, it's like it has, then it comes out as a butterfly. It changes. And Jesus can help change us as well in beautiful ways. Now, the caterpillar was beautiful before it became a butterfly, right? I think it is. At least I like my art. It's beautiful beforehand. But it's even more beautiful as a butterfly afterwards. And Jesus can do that with us to help us to become beautiful like butterflies. So that's part of my story. The other part of my story is kind of a sad story. Dinosaurs? I like dinosaurs. It's not a dinosaur story, but maybe one time I'll bring a dinosaur story. That's a good idea. I like that. The T-Rex? Yeah. I'm going to have, you've challenged me now. I'm going to have to find a dinosaur book. Y'all have heard it here. It might take me a few weeks. Yeah. I have a different story. This is, so we celebrated and we heard the story about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And everyone was shouting, Hosanna, save us. 
and recognizing that he was the king and it was fun like a big parade exciting people were so excited but before by the end of the week here's another part of the story that happens this is called the trial and the death of jesus but remember next week we celebrate that jesus is alive with easter so i'll give you a little spoiler alert there but here's the story here i want to share with you After Jesus' last supper with his disciples, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus stayed awake, praying alone. Suddenly, soldiers surrounded them and arrested Jesus. They accused him of trying to become king. At his trial, the Roman ruler Pontius Pilate asked, Are you the king of the Jews? My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus answered. Set him free, said Pilate. This man has done nothing wrong. But some people were very angry. He called himself a king, they shouted. Crucify him. To please the crowd, Pilate ordered the soldiers to beat Jesus and then kill him. They whipped him and made fun of him, pretending he was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and a red cloak around him. Then they made him carry a heavy wooden cross to the hill outside the city. They nailed Jesus to the cross. His mother Mary and several other women women wept at his feet and stayed with him until the very end. Then Jesus prayed to God one last time before he died. Father, forgive them, for they do not understand your dream. Father, forgive them, for they do not understand your dream. Let us pray. Will you pray with me? Dear God, help me to forgive and to love just as Jesus loves and forgives. Just as Jesus loves and forgives. Amen. And those are ways, loving and forgiving, that help us to become these beautiful butterflies. And I want to invite you to color your pictures, and we can hang them up at the church if you would like. And you can go back to your seats. Let us pray. Lord, speak a message to us from your heart to our hearts. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. As we heard the scripture read from Kyle, we heard of this triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It's a story for many of us here that have heard it many times. For some of you, you might be hearing this story for the first time. As I've been pondering this story and the many times that I have heard it, I'm reminded of how stories shape our lives lives. The stories we hear impact us. The stories we tell ourselves impact our lives. The stories that we tell others impact the lives of others as well. Here is this story that I hope we all can hear again and again in a new and fresh way. It's a story that in so many ways is as radical today as it was 2,000 years ago. As we hear this story, we know the rest of the story of Jesus' life with his crucifixion and his resurrection. And, And next week we'll celebrate Easter and what a joyous occasion that will be. 
But as we move towards Easter and we get excited with our own celebrations that you might be planning with family and friends, we get excited here to plan an egg hunt. Did all the kids hear that? There's an egg hunt after church next week. There's so much exciting things to be looking forward to. I want to invite us this week, though, also to take the time to journey with Jesus in Jerusalem, to journey with Jesus to the cross, and to celebrate with Jesus on Easter. Because we don't get to Easter, we don't get to the butterfly without going through the cross And the caterpillar doesn't get there without going through the cocoon. And we don't get to the point of new life without going through the struggles and letting go of the old life. And so we want to invite you in that spirit to take a look again at this text that Kyle read to us. It's a story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. What the Gospels don't tell us is what else was going on at that time. They give us a few things. We know Jesus is coming into town to celebrate a high holy holiday, most likely to celebrate the Passover, the time in which the the Jews remembered God's salvation, saving them from slavery in Egypt being with them as they crossed the desert for years, bringing them into the promised land, remembering God's never leaving them, always being with them, a time to remember the faithfulness of God, a time to be in expectation and hope that God would deliver them again. Deliver them from the tyranny that they experienced under Roman rule. Under this occupation, Jesus and thousands of others come to Jerusalem. No doubt as Jesus had done many times before. Coming into the city to celebrate. But Jesus has orchestrated something a little bit different that day. Jesus has orchestrated this grand parade into the city. At the same time as Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan talk about in their book, The Last Week, and Amy Jill Levine talks about it in um, her Lenten devotion as well. At the same time, Jesus plans this entry into the city. One where he can have his disciples go ahead of him and say, hey, I can, just go untie that cold. It's going to be okay. No one's calling 911 and, and trying to retain you, thinking you've stolen something. They're willing to let Jesus borrow it. He's planned this event. At the same time, Pilate, the Roman governor, is coming into the city. The Roman authorities were known to come into Jerusalem on high holy days as well. They came in not to celebrate the high holy day. They came in to keep the peace. They came in with their kind of imperial religion who says that their leaders are God. The emperor is God, the savior of everyone. They came in, Pilate came in with all of his weapons and his soldiers and this military parade to keep the peace, to make sure those that were coming into the city and those that lived there knew who was in control. To make sure that nothing would get out of line too much. And there's Jesus coming into the city. He's coming in on a donkey or a colt. He's coming in on what historically for them is a symbol of a leader coming in in peace. So imagine someone coming in peace in the middle of occupation 
in the middle of this Ro the Romans and the tyranny that they gave to the people. It was a terrible time of suffering for people. People were desperate. Jesus, save us. They were hopeful that things would change. Any of you hopeful that some things in our world might change? Some things that are a little bit offline? Some ways in which we are not living into God's vision for us? They're singing, they're celebrating Jesus coming. Jesus comes as a symbol of peace. Peace standing up against all this military arms and stuff. The only weapon Jesus has is love. 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 Love so strong it can forgive. Forgive those who killed him. Forgive those who betrayed him. Forgive those who denied him. Forgive those who stood by silently. Those that hid away because they were scared and afraid. That's what Jesus came into the city with that sort of love and peace. He's symboling, symbolizing that there's a new way, a new day. Things can be different for people. And the crowd is so hopeful. So hopeful. They're waving their branches. They're so excited. Jesus is going to come and save them. Here's someone like King David. He's going to have peace for us. And under King David, they did have peace. Their neighbors might have had a little bloodshed, but they had peace. They were looking to be able to take back their lives. To go back to maybe the way they thought things used to be. Jesus never brings us back. Jesus is always pointing us into God's vision for the world. This is an amazing vision that Jesus has. Jesus is special. He's, we believe as Christians that Jesus is, is fully divine and fully human. And this special Jesus comes into the city with this message of peace. And the people are excited. But it doesn't take them long to turn on Jesus. It doesn't even take a week. And those that were saying, Jesus, save us, realize that he's not coming to save them in the way that they're looking for. And what do we do when we're expecting Jesus to come save us in one way and we don't see it happening fast enough? Or we don't get the answers that we want. Because sometimes we don't. Our prayers are answered, but God's not an ATM machine that spits us out what we're looking for. God's economy is not one where you put something in and you get the same amount back out. Jesus shows us something different. He shows us that might and control and power is different in God's kingdom. It's not a power that powers over and dominates. It's a power that invites people in and draws them together. It draws them together in a way that is hopeful. But what do we do when we get disappointed? When things don't happen on our timeline? I, I have some sympathy for the crowd because, you know, sometimes that happens. We get a little disillusioned with things. And we humans don't always respond in a way that has integrity with who we are like Jesus does. And the crowd is there shouting, crucify him. Or they're hiding in fear. They're denying him, betraying him, turning on Jesus. And Jesus continues to show us a different way. Jesus continues to show us a different way even on the cross. Father, forgive them, 
for they know not what they're doing. Father, forgive them, for they don't understand your dream. And who is he saying to forgive? Forgive everyone. Everyone. Each of us. To forgive those who were there shouting Hosanna and excited with Jesus and aligned with him. And those that were a few days later standing in that same crowd shouting crucify him, crucify him, kill him before the Romans kill us because of him. Jesus is saying forgive those who betrayed him. Forgive those who denied even knowing him. Forgive those that are hiding in fear, that have forgotten that God's love is more powerful than fear. Forgive them. All of them. Forgive those that stand silently. Forgive everyone. Forgive them. Let the power of love seep inside everyone. Let this power of love transform everyone. That's the invitation that Jesus gives to us. To let the power of love, a power that doesn't kill, but a power that resurrects, a power that gives new life, A power that can come to us when we are in the most desperate of places. And say, come and follow me. Come and follow me. I know what it's like to walk through difficult times. Come and follow me. Come and see. Come and see the cross. Yes, there are hard times. Come and see people laughing at you. People betraying you. I know what it's like, Jesus says. Come and follow me. And I'll show you resurrection. I'll show you new life. All those places and spaces in your life that you're struggling with, I can turn those into a beautiful butterfly. Come and follow me. Well, when the parade is over, friends, do we pick up our lives? Do we brush them off and live in the old way? Do we toss our palm branches aside so we can grasp the seductions of the world for power, for control? As we begin through this holiest of weeks, let us prepare our hearts and speak the truth as we confess to God and pray together, ever constant God, mixing love and hope together, you've paved the way to the kingdom, but we prefer to stub our toes on the potholed rows of temptation. You'll touch the cup of grace to our parched lips, but sometimes we seem to hunger for the ashy taste of bitterness. You beg us to learn the songs of salvation, but we hum along with the chorus death plays in the background of our lives. Have mercy upon us, God of holiness. As you come to us, you bring healing for our brokenness, peace for our troubled lives, hope for our doubting minds. May we empty ourselves of everything which keeps us from following you so we may receive these gifts and more from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, laying aside judgment, God offers us, you, me, each of us, all of us, redemption. Setting aside anger, God embraces us with love. Letting go of grief, God pours water upon us. This is the good news, my friends. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is one who brings us the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Rise Again.
Yes, the praise hymnal number 229. And some of you are going to come lead it up here, and I am going to move away from the mic. Jesus, who did rise again, and who will rise again, and helps us to rise again, offers to us the sacrament of Holy Communion. It's Jesus' communion table. And at Jesus' communion table, all are worthy and all are welcome. You need not be a certain age or to be a member of this church or any church. Those that are curious about Jesus and those are committed about Jesus and those that are just wondering what all this means. All are welcome. All are welcome to come and participate in this sacrament of Holy Communion that Jesus offers to us. And I wanna invite you to join Rachel with the communion liturgy. May the God of Hosannas be with you. May the God of this holy week be with you. Lift your broken hearts to our God, who will fill them with hope in these days. 
Remember to sing laments during this holy time. We do so that we may know the reason for glad songs of joy. Morning by morning, creation's voices join in praising you, God of every goodness. The forest of form a festal pr procession. The heavens reflect your glory's light. Though we were formed by you, we looked around at everything sin and death had to offer. We followed them through the world, thinking that they could protect us. You gave prophets the tongues of teachers to comfort our weariness and to teach us the way back to you. But we turned our back on them. When judgment did not lead to redemption, you sent Jesus to reach out in love to bring us home to you. So with those who spread cloaks before you and those who who are sustained by your love, we join our voices proclaiming, Holy, 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 God of enduring love, from every part of creation come glad songs. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in humility and hope. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, sustainer of the weary, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your son, who became human. Jesus emptied himself of glory to be filled with our broken hopes and hearts. He chose the path of suffering love so that we could run through the streets of the kingdom, weaving branches of joy. He walked in the sin-cold stones into tombs which could not hold him so that we could join our voices together. Hosanna, Hosanna, he has risen. As we journey through Jerusalem and beyond, as we struggle with life and death and grief, may we remember this gift that Jesus gave to his disciples and that Jesus gives to us. On the night before Jesus was arrested and the arrest that led to his crucifixion, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples. They were all gathered there together. And Jesus took bread, bread that was on the table, the bread for the meal. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, my body given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. Take and savor love. Take and savor forgiveness and mercy. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. And when the meal was over, Jesus took the cup, the cup that was on the table, and I imagine he looked around the room at all of his disciples, making sure they all knew that he was looking at them, that he meant that this is really a gift for each of them, a gift for each of us. This cup, he gave thanks. This is a cup of the new covenant. Jesus' love poured out poured out for the forgiveness of sins, for you, for me, for all of God's children. Take drink in remembrance of me. And they did. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, May we offer ourselves to you, O Lord, in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we ponder and proclaim the mystery that we call faith. In trust, Christ died. In joy, Christ was raised to new life. In hope, Christ will come again. Here at the table, grace with creation's gifts, we discover the world that you intend, Lord. 
here where your love enlivens the bread and the cup as we are given more than enough of everything that we need sharing deeply with the spirit we can give hope its wings as it carries us to serve the broken all around us strengthened by the grace with which you feed us we can join together to sustain the weary of the world and when the gates of joy have been opened to us we will spend moment by moment every knee in creation bending singing our praises to you O lord god in community holy one pour out your holy spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine that are on the altar or in our hands at home may they be for us the body and blood of christ that we may be for the world the body of christ redeemed by his blood by your spirit make us one with christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now we join our voices as one body, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite John to come forward to serve with me. And once the, the elements are ready, we invite you to, to come as you are led. Um, come as the Spirit leads you up the aisle to receive the elements. And then around the side, there are baskets on the front pews um, to collect the communion cups as well. And if you'd like us to bring communion to you, um, for whatever reason, please let us know and we'll make sure that we do that as well. And if you want, would prefer a prepackaged element, John has those as well. And we have gluten-free available. The table is set, come and eat.
Let us pray together. Lord, we give thanks for this holy sustenance you have offered to us. You have filled us with your spirit and prepared us to go forth into the world, sharing the good news of Jesus' transformative hope, love, and mercy. Thank you. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. It's in the Red United Methodist Hymnal, number 213. draw your attention to the announcements that were included with the bulletin. I want to invite you to come back here on Thursday evening to worship in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live. Uh, we will celebrate Monday, Thursday. If you're able to come in person, I invite you to come early um, and to come for our soup and salad dinner on Thursday evening. Um, all the Food is being brought in by various people. Thank you for all that are giving in this way. And so if you've not signed up to bring something to eat, guess what? Just come and be our guest. There'll be plenty of food. Uh, bring a friend with you um, and, and celebrate this holy evening together. On Friday, there is a community Good, Fr Good Friday crosswalk. Um, in Canal Winchester, I invite you to come and to be a part of that experience following the cross through the streets of Canal Winchester. We'll meet at the train depot there. And then we will have worship at noon at Hope United Methodist Church. And Marla is going to be playing uh, the piano there for that service. I want to invite you to join us there. It's um, a service that's led by the Canal Winchester Lithopolis Ministerial Association, of which I am a part of. Also want to invite you to come back here next Sunday to celebrate Easter. Come a little early if you'd like. We're going to have some a continental breakfast, so some time for food and fellowship uh, before worship. We'll worship at 1030, and afterwards we will have an egg hunt, rain or shine. Hopefully the sun will be shining and we can have our egg hunt outside. If not, we will have it indoors, and we're going to invite those that want to hunt for eggs to hunt for eggs. Not just the wee little ones, um, but want definitely the wee little ones to, to be here for that as well. So please invite others to come and to be a part of that as well. Um, the Mothers and Others Banquet is coming up on April 30th. And I think, Tracy, do you have some details you want to share with that?
Great, thank you. So for those that maybe didn't hear, especially those that are online with us, we have a Mothers and Others Banquet coming up after church on April the 30th and invite everyone to come with that. Uh, we invite you, um, ask if you're able to make a contribution for the food for that of, of $10 donation um, and want you to come and, and to be with us and don't want the cost to be something that prevents that from happening. Um, come join us for Bible study. We'll be doing that on Zoom as we um, have been doing for a while, uh, 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. So please come and, and be a part of that. Um, it's a way that we can, we can learn the scriptures and the, listen to the stories uh, again uh, together. Also, in... Yes, mothers and others, we're going to be honoring, celebrating mothers, but everyone is welcome to come. Yes, thank you for that. Yes, if you come to church, you can stay and eat. You don't have to drive in separate vehicles if you came with a, a significant other who's not a mother. Um, please, uh, everyone can come and be, be a part of that. Thank you for that clarification. There's also many ways that we can engage in the community through the giving of our tithes and offerings to support the mission and ministry of the church and to support the many uh, food pantries and homeless programs that, that we reach out to as well. Are there other announcements that I missed that need to be highlighted? As you go forth from here, Go forth filled up with this love that Jesus gives to us. And know that this love has the power to change everything. As you go into the world, know this for some, the kind of peace that Jesus came into Jerusalem so long ago to show us is possible for many. That kind of peace doesn't seem possible. The kind of love that can transform everything is a stranger for some. May they find us to be the most generous of friends. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's sing Go Now in Peace. It's 665 in the hymnal.